I will be demonstrating how an end gate works through breadboard simulation. The materials needed in this breadboard simulation are, of course, a breadboard where we will connect all the other components in order to complete our basic circuit. Since I do not own any battery, I will be using the 220 volts AC to 9 volts DC power supply adapter instead. It transforms the alternating current or AC into a stable direct current or DC which can be used to power our circuit. Next is the power supply module. It allows us to connect to our AC-DC adapter and helps provide 5 volts output voltage which is what we need for this particular simulation. We will also need wires in order to make connections to a breadboard. Of course, a resistor in order to limit the flow of current to our LED in the range that suits them best because too much current will destroy them but too little prevents them from working properly. Next, we have our 74LS08IC. It is a quadruple 8-bit 2-input end IC that requires 5 volts. Lastly, an LED that would represent our output. Now that we have all the materials we need, Let's hop on to the actual demo and simulation. First, we have to place our power supply module on the breadboard. If we take a closer look at it, there is a positive and negative sign on both sides. Therefore, we will have to place the positive sign on the positive side rail and the negative sign on the negative side rail. The red is the positive and the blue is the negative. Next, we will place our 74LS08IC or our end gate on the breadboard. On the upper right corner is a diagram of 74LS08 pinout. There, we can see four end gates are inside. When we've identified the cut mark on our IC, right here, we can now tell basing from the diagram that this pin is number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Let's now place the end gate IC on the breadboard. Now that we've inserted our IC on the breadboard, as you can see on the diagram, pin number 7 is ground, so we have to connect it to the negative side rail using wires. Likewise, pin number 14 is VCC, so we have to connect it on the positive side rail. In this simulation, we will use pins 1 and 2 as our input and pin 3 for our output. To observe how an end gate behaves, we are going to need to use an LED. So, I'm going to place our sister on pin 3. Now, we need to place our LED over here. The longer leg of the LED must be connected to pin 3 and the shorter leg must be connected to negative or ground. Now, let's connect both our inputs, pin 1 and pin 2, to 0 or ground. Let's connect the barrel jack of our AC-DC power supply to our power supply module and turn it on. Using the end gate truth table, which can be seen on the upper right, when two inputs are zero, the output will be zero as well. Therefore, the LED will not light. 
I'm just going to leave the power supply on. Now, I'm going to disconnect pin 2 and move it to high or 1. As you can see, the LED still did not light up. Since basing from the truth table, when the first input is 0 and the second input is 1, the output will still be 0. Next, I am going to disconnect pin 1 and place it in high or 1 and I will also disconnect pin 2 and place it in 0 or ground. Still, the LED won't light up because looking at the truth table, when the first input is 1 and the second input is 0, the output remains 0. Lastly, I'm going to place both inputs to high or 1. Now, the LED will light up since according to the truth table, when two inputs are 1, the output will be 1 as well. In this video, we saw how an end gate works. We now know that the output will only become 1 when both inputs are 1 as well.